Welcome back to another exciting chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to look at properties of matters. Now, there are two types of properties of matters. The first one is chemical properties, and the other one is physical properties. The key difference is this. When we look at our properties of matters, we have to ask this question. Can we observe the properties without changing the identity of the substance? And if the answer is yes, more likely that properties is a physical properties. Because we observe physical properties all the time without endangering our life. That's the key difference because some chemical properties are very harmful to us. And now physical properties are grouped into two types, intensive and extensive properties. And the key difference is, does the property depend on the amount of substance? Well, if the answer is yes, that is extensive, is external factor. Think of it that way, right? Extensive, X means external somehow. So therefore, in this case, the external f factor is amount. So for example, mass, volume, length, and shape. So let's look at the example of water. When we have a lot of water, the mass increases. When we have little, it decreases. And we can prove that using a scale. And same thing with volumes, okay? When we have a lot of water, the volume go up. And we have a little water, the volume go down. And in terms of length, of course, the changes with the amount of the substance. Where intensive properties, it doesn't matter how much water you have, the water color doesn't change. The same thing with the density of water. It doesn't matter how much water you have. You can have an ocean or the lake of water. And that density of water is still one gram per milliliter. And melting point and boiling point of water also stay the same. Water will always boil at 100 degrees Celsius and freeze at zero degrees Celsius. And that is physical properties. So let's go back and look at chemical properties. Chemical properties, a lot of time when we observe chemical property, the substance change into a different substance. Now, we want to ask ourselves this question all the time when we look at chemical properties. Does the substance react in the presence, for example, of other chemicals like water, oxygen? For example, iron is a common metal that would form rust in the presence of oxygen. And then most metal would react with acid to produce hydrogen gas. Okay. Now, does it react differently in the presence of heat? Okay. Think of firework, right? When chemicals that are exposed to heat, it causes explosion, right? So think of that, okay? Because some chemical, when exposed to heat, is very explosive. So here are a common example of chemical properties. Well, we have chemical stability toxicity, how dangerous it is. Some chemists use these properties. Do you know how many king and queens or nobles get killed because of this specific properties right here? Because some chemicals are very toxic, right? So like arsenic, this has no flavor, it is colorless, it is tasteless. One of the most toxic chemicals that used to kill many king and queen or even nobles, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, and then we have reactivity, flammability, solubility. This is dissolving water, corrosion, and possible chemical bond. And that's the heart of chemistry. We are going to look at those chemical properties to determine how it's going to react and form all these beautiful substances that we see in our daily life. Now here's a common one right here. Here we have flammability, okay, another chemical changes in terms of decomposition. And here we have chromium, right, is resistant to rust or corrosion. And here we have this metal right here. And here we have this metal right here is very sensitive to corrosion and rust. And here we have a chemical react to each other. One is a, an aqueous form or a solution. And then here we have a solid. It forms a different gas. So those are examples of chemical properties. And and here is a very good example of why we need to understand chemical properties. Well, the NFPA, which, which is National Fire Protection Agency, they have this hazard diamond that summarizes the major hazard of a chemicals. The, well, if we look at this in terms of level, it's from 0 to 4. 0 is safe. 
Four is get the heck out of there because, or just be careful because it's super dangerous, okay? For example, if something like this re reactivity with the level four, it could cause a huge explosion, okay? Now, let's look at fire hazard. If we have a level four, it could cause fire at degree of 73 Fahrenheit, and that is very low, okay? Very, very low. That is pretty much almost at room temperature. So imagine if you have a chemical that could combust at room temperature all the time, um, that would not be very safe, right? And then here we have health hazard. With number four, it is deadly. That means it can kill you, okay? So whenever you see a chemical has a health hazard of number four, it's time to be very careful and get away. Call your local hazard agency so that way they can deal with it. And here we have another one, which right here is very specific. For example, W. Guess what W stands for? Water. So this chemical will react with water, so don't get water near it, okay? And then we have acid, we have an alkali, we have oxidizer, and we have radioactive. Radioactive, okay, these are something that when we deal with nuclear chemistry, some substance are radioactive and it could, it could trigger your body to develop cancer. And because remember, radiation, like gamma radiation, are very toxic to our cells. It could trigger specific mutation in your body or in that specific cell. And that's how cancer are created, okay? A lot of cancer cells are triggered by radiation that allow them to cause mutation in the DNA and cause mutation in the cell so that the cell just continue to duplicate nonstop and grow this tumor in your body. So that's important why we don't work with radioactive substances. With our hands, we have to wear protective gloves, protective uh, wear, so that way we don't expose to the radiation. So that is the difference between physical and chemical properties and why we need to understand it and learn how to use information to protect ourselves and also to apply chemical concepts to protect ourselves but also to learn about the different substances in our daily life. So let's go do an example problem. In this question, we are going to drag and drop or put properties of matter in the correct type of properties. So we have reactivity, that is chemical properties, density, that is intensive property, color, also intensive properties of physical properties, and toxicity, and soluble water, and check. There you go. That's it. That's all we have to do. So it's really easy to distinguish between physical and chemical property, but the key is knowing how we can use this in later chemistry concept. And we we'll see you next time in another exciting and we we'll see you next time on another exciting chemistry lesson.